public class, um, we did our Indie Lab on helicopters. So this is kind of how the helicopter blade works. Um, imagine this oval shaped thing is the blade and it spins around in a circle but you're only seeing this small cross-sectional area of it. And so it really throws air down because when it spins it pushes the air down. And it also follows a conservation of momentum law. So like the amount that the helicopter would move up and the velocity that it moves up would be the same as the air that it forces down. Um, but it also acts as a really fast moving wing. <clears throat> because of its shape, it looks just like a wing, and it actually follows the lift equation, which is what I did in my last semester in E-Lab as well, except we're studying something different. Um, so you have the force is equal to one-half the constant of lift times the area of the blades, <coughs> the area of the blades. So that's a terrible circle, but if this is the blade, they sweep out of the circular area, and so that's the area we're considering. Um, and then the rho is the density of the fluid, which is the density of air, and then V squared. So really what we're going to study is the force being proportion, that's terrible, proportional to V squared. I think that's backwards. But, so that's really what we're studying. Okay, so we used two different helicopters. One had four blades and one had two. And then we had plywood light batteries, a radio controller, fourth sensor, interface, computer string, and a tachometer. Alright, do you want to do some pictures? Sure, okay. So, we have, here's the helicopter with the four blades, and we, we used two different setups. One, we had plywood, and then there was a hole, and the four sensor would go through it, and then there was string attached to the helicopter. And then the second we like had the helicopter upside down and then attached to the force sensor and then someone would just hold the force sensor. And by doing it upside down, you can get small amounts of um, lift or thrust that like you can't get if it's on the ground. Because if it's on the ground, you have to have enough lift or thrust to lift the helicopter off the ground before you get in at force reading. So by doing it upside down, you can read really small forces. Sorry. Was balance an issue if you're holding it just by the force sensor upside down? Yes. Okay, so we predicted that the force would be, it would depend on the velocity squared. And that's shown by that graph. That's like the most ideal um, lift force versus velocity graph. So that's what we were going to compare, compare our results to. Okay, so for the procedure with, well, they're basically the same. We zeroed the force sensor, and then we had we turned on the helicopter to a set speed, and we measured the force with Logger Pro, and then we pointed the tachometer at the blades and measured the revolution, and then we repeated with um, different blade speeds. And then, um, so when you measure the blade speeds, you're actually getting the like double the RPM that you want because you got two blades, so you're reading half as quick as you would is as if one blade went around, which is the actual speed that both blades are moving at. So any RPM reading we got, we have to divide by two. Um, these are our data tables. These are more for just being reported. But um, in order to find everything we wanted, we had to get the linear speed of the blades from the RPM, and we also had to get the area of the blades. Um, we were trying to do something with mass flow and conservation of momentum, but then we realized that our helicopter wasn't going up or down because it was on a string, so we couldn't, so we couldn't do any momentum things. That. And that's the data table for the second helicopter. So our graphs. Um, these graphs are really what validates our hypothesis. These are graphs of the force of the lift or thrust against the linear speed of the blades, which was square. And it, so it shows a linear, um, linear line. And from that slope, you can determine the lift coefficient, which is what we do later. That's really linear. And this is the second helicopter graph. Um, it's not as linear. There's one outlying point. We're not really sure about that. That's probably has to do with the balance issue. But um, it's still still pretty linear. And so when we calculated our lift coefficients, those are the numbers that we're reporting. Um, so we had this slope from force over velocity squared. And then in addition to that, you had to solve for um, constant lift. 
So you multiply by 2, and then also divide by the density, which was known, and then the area of the blade, which was known. So that's how we determine both of those. This is being our slope, and then 2 is constant. Rho is constant, is constant. Um, no, I'll hold it for later. Go ahead. Okay, so some sources of air, uh, like the motor could pull, and then when flying, the helicopter could be tilted, and then not all of the thrust would be in the vertical axis, and then the blade angle could vary. So we didn't really have error analysis. This is more of a comparison of the coefficients. Um, I'm not saying they should be the same, but there was the 77% difference between them. It was two different helicopters. Um, and it's, oh, I didn't note that for helicopter one, or one of the helicopters, it has two blade sets. And we assumed that, the, so the blades counter rotate to counteract torque, so the helicopter just doesn't spin madly. Um, so we said each of those blades counts for half of the lift force on the helicopter. So in the end, we our hypothesis was correct, which is seen in the linear graphs. Thank you. We have time for about a minute of questions. Um, uh, could you go back to the uh, to the slide where you have the lift constants that you calculated? Um, what are the differences between them, and what do you make of those two? Because they are dramatically different. Well, the difference is, well, the blade shape. Um, some blades are more tilted, like, it could be like, well, I guess it's more circular. We'll just leave it like that. Some blades are more like that tilted, and others are like that, or like that. And that constant, it, it's just a graph shift. It, it's, it's essentially dimensionless. I showed that in the write-up. It, it, it has no dimensions. It really is just based on this angle. So that's angle of attack, yes. just like last semester's lab. Yes, and it's also the material, which is the plastic, so it could be slightly different kinds of plastic, and how malleable, malleable they are. So. Thank you. And another thought about um, you, you're pumping an enormous mass of air downward, right? Yes. And uh, you could calculate the energy that is being put out, the power of the motor, uh, <clears throat> and you could look at the power electrically also, if you had some very light connectors to go to it, I think that would be really interesting. So maybe when you go to college, you could continue studying this. More questions? Thank you.